Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. Um, we've got a bit of an upgrade in the snake room. Very, very easy for me out here in the tropics. For those of you who uh, are new to the channel, and the channel has grown quite significantly, a little bit about me. Uh, I work in the oil industry out here in uh, Malaysia, and I'm now semi-retired. I've been keeping snakes for about six years, and this is my fifth year of breeding. For the last couple of years I've worked quite closely with ARP Constrictors which is one of the biggest breeders in Malaysia. Uh, so whilst my clutches have been limited to uh, five or six clutches a year, uh, I have seen 80 to 100 clutches for the last couple of years at ARP Constrictors. So plenty of breeders out there with more experience than me. Um, I started the channel to promote uh, ball pythons in Southeast Asia and in particular in Malaysia. So here is my new 18 tub rack system guys and before I put it into the snake room I just want to show you how simple it is out here in the tropics. We have no electrical connections, uh, there's no heat mats in the rack, you can see around the back here. There's just a little tab on the back to stop the tubs from going in too far. And each metal plate that separates the layers has holes in it for ventilation. Um, these holes are quite large and cover about a third of the tub. Uh, you wouldn't want to keep colubrids in there, but for ball pythons these are fine. The ball pythons can't get out of there. The uh, tubs themselves are just straight tubs from a hardware shop uh, there's a manufacturer here in KL that makes these things in different sizes I managed to get red ones the same as my existing ones and I do have a little bit more real estate in the tubs than my previous tubs that they're replacing you see the tub sits inside there so they are slightly larger but not by much and you see the tubs just slide Nice and easy. Into each slot, very easily removable for, for cleaning. So there we go guys, it's on wheels. I just need to wheel it into the room. Uh, there's no plugs to connect up, nothing, uh, no thermostats, no heat mats, as I said. Very, very simple. Uh, so it's a quick and easy upgrade. I just move this in, move the old rack out, put the snakes in the new rack, and we're good to go. So there it is. And of particular interest to you guys will be the fact that I don't use heat mats here. I live in the tropics. Uh, my snake room is at ambient temperature, which uh, right now is 29.6 centigrade and 70% humidity so it's uh, a little bit sticky and warm in here um, for those that work in uh, Fahrenheit 29.6 uh, is about uh, 85 85 and a half Fahrenheit and the temperature in here during the day will climb to about uh, 30 uh, 30.5 centigrade so around about 86 87 Fahrenheit at night time the temperature drops to about 29 centigrade which is about 84.5, 85 Fahrenheit um, and that's the ambient temperature here outside uh, every day the temperature gets to about 34, 35 sometimes even 36 centigrade and drops at night particularly after rain to uh, the mid 20s 26, uh, 27 centigrade uh, but in the snake room we're buffered from that um, I only have one electrical socket in the whole room. I have an extension cable that runs to uh, some of the vivariums to run the fans. And I also have a uh, fan in the room for uh, ventilation. Quite important because, as I say, we don't have any heat mats here. I try to find a uh, temperature that uh, suits the snakes without having to make any uh, adjustments. Uh, so there are no temperature gradients in any of the tubs 
What the snakes do have, if necessary, is a ceramic water bowl. Um, I don't use delicups, I don't use plastic, I use ceramic. And the reason for that is as the uh, water evaporates from the bowls, and that's why I need to keep air circulation quite strong, um, the bowls themselves remain several degrees cooler than the rest of the tub. So the snakes do have access to cooler temperatures if they need to, simply by touching the water bowl or wrapping the water bowl, depending upon how cool they want to be. Uh, but generally speaking, in the wild, these animals will find a temperature that suits them, which is around 86 to uh, 88 Fahrenheit, and that's the temperature that they remain, and uh, they need very little uh, adjustment to that temperature. That's the temperature they, they get naturally out here in the tropics, so I don't use heat mats, and the snakes can fine-tune their temperatures as necessary by wrapping the water bowls if they need to. So. Um, what we're going to do today is just have a poke around the snake room. The seasons here are uh, hot and wet and hot and wetter and we're just coming out of the wet season. Um, my snakes breed in the wet season. It is the northern hemisphere here so uh, the seasons are approximately the same as yours uh, but we don't get winters. We don't get summer and winter. We just get a wet season and a dry season. Daytime temperatures remain about the same 34 to 36 centigrade every single day. In the wet season, um, it rains every afternoon and it gets extremely humid. Uh, humidity can get very close to 100% and it's very hot and sweaty in the snake room here, but um, the snakes seem to like it and um, this is the time of year that they breed. So we're just coming out of the wet season now. Temperatures during the day are starting to climb just a little bit and nighttime temperatures don't drop quite so much. Uh, as I said, here in the snake room we are buffered from those temperature changes, so very little variation. But the snakes can sense the difference in the seasonal variation. Um, so I've been pairing my snakes since uh, October, and some of my females now are starting to go off food as we come out of the wet season and temperatures start to climb. I am expecting to see the first ovulations. So um, let's open a few tubs so you can see what my set setups are and we run with the seasonal cycles. Uh, the wet season is when I pair my snakes up, so around about October. The wet season ends about now, end of February to uh, March time and I expect first eggs around uh, April or May is usually when my females start to lay. Okay, let's open a few tubs and take a look. Uh, this is one of my uh, bigger girls. She's tucked away at the back in her uh, hide at the moment, but uh, let me just heat gun and show you how effective the uh, water bowls are here. So away from the water bowl, out here, we are at 87, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I heat gun the water bowl, you can see that the temperature is significantly cooler in the water bowl. So evaporation by itself cools the water bowls. These ceramic water bowls uh, give the snakes access to cooler temperatures if they need it. So it is extremely effective. Now this girl here has been off food for about 40 days so I am expecting an ovulation any day soon but you can see she's maximizing her exposure to the water bowl and cooling her body temperature slightly from ambient. This pied girl is doing the same thing, she is building follicles, uh, so she is fine tuning her body temperature simply by wrapping the water bowl. Same thing for this girl, maximizing her exposure to the water bowl, she's also building follicles, she's been bred this year. This girl is in shed, uh, but she's doing exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Uh, this is the sort of behaviour that all my breeder females exhibit. Uh, let me just show you some non-breeder females to show you the difference. So this is a, uh, a yearling female and you can see that she's tucked away at the back of her tub. She's not hugging the water bowl, she is not building follicles. So she's maintaining her temperature slightly higher, uh, sitting at the back of the tub there. Another non-breeder female, she's avoiding the water bowl. Is a yearling vanilla clown sitting underneath the paper there. Uh, so you can see that the breeder females are displaying different behavior to the uh, non-breeder females. This is another breeder male and he is not cooling himself. He's actually uh, quite curious as to what's going on. 
Now, the males don't seem to bowl wrap in the same way that the females do. The males don't really care about uh, temperature and cooling over much. So let me just show you the uh, setup inside my tubs. Very, very simple. You'll notice I do not use substrate. I simply use a sheet of newspaper, which is the absorbent piece, and then a sheet of white unprinted paper on the top. The water bowl goes in there, and that's it. Um, I don't use substrate for the reason that uh, it is very, very humid here, and if the snakes pee on any type of substrate, and that includes cocoa husk, um, it does not uh, absorb the pee, the, the cocoa husk gets um, very soggy and very quickly goes mouldy. So um, I avoid a substrate uh, just to keep the snakes as dry as possible. Humidity is not an issue here. 70% humidity is uh, uh, very muggy, I think you'd call it in the UK. Um, it's uh, extremely sweaty here in the snake room. Um, one of the essential pieces of kit that I have in the snake room uh, sitting on top of the bin there is a towel for mopping my brow while I'm working on the snakes. So the setup is extremely simple. Um, the tubs you'll notice are red, colour coordination, but what this does is actually um, uh, keeps the snakes fairly dark, uh, which um, the snakes seem to prefer. They feel more secure in uh, dark tubs. I do have some uh, clear tubs here, most of my colubrids are in these tubs but there are a couple of larger ball pythons in the tubs there and I do have some spare slots uh, but I find that the uh, ball pythons actually prefer the, uh, the red tubs uh, which are slightly darker. Uh, in the tropics also we do not have uh, much variation in daylight for all of, all of you guys that uh, cycle your daylight hours. Uh, we have 12 hour daylight pretty much the whole year round uh, it gets light at 7 o'clock in the morning, it gets dark at 7 o'clock at night and there is no variation throughout the year. Uh, here in the snake room I tend to keep the lights off so the snakes are in the dark all the time uh, and they don't really uh, seem to care very much. Um, in the wild they live underground so they would naturally, uh, of course they'd know when daylight hours are, uh, just as my snakes do, but um, they pretty much live in the dark the whole time. I do have an air conditioning unit in the snake room in case I need it on very very hot days but I rarely use it. Um, one thing I did differently this breeding season was uh, during the wet season I actually put the air conditioning on full time um, just to knock the temperature down by about a degree uh, and keep the temperature consistent in here. I haven't done that in previous years uh, but this season I did and uh, I found that my uh, snakes were locking a little bit more willingly and also in sync with each other rather than spread throughout the year. So that was my objective, was to try to condense my breeding season by just adding a touch of AC. Uh, as we come out of the wet season now, I'm naturally letting the temperatures rise a little bit. Um, so the AC is now switched off and I don't expect to have to use it again uh, for the rest of the year. Now you can see here my uh, grow-on rack. Uh, I do have some space now. Since the upgrade I've moved some of my grow-ons into the bigger rack. Um, this 16 tub rack uh, replaced uh, a 10 tub rack. Uh, this is my hatchling rack which is um, pretty full. These are uh, pickups and hatchlings. This new rack here is the uh, 18 tub rack that replaced the 16 tub rack and you can see I've got space at the top and I have space at the bottom. And the even bigger tubs here, uh, I have about four or five vacant slots in uh, this rack also. So um, plenty of room still here in the snake room. There's my Royal Bowls backlit logo, which I still have to find a suitable filter for the camera so that I can show you guys what it looks like in the dark. These are my retics in the uh, big terraniums there. A couple of warmer pythons and a couple of green tree pythons there on the shelf. So we've taken a look at some adult breeder females that are uh, quite clearly building follicles and bowl hugging and uh, those females have been bred. 
Um, interesting to note that the other adult females which I'm not breeding are also behaving the same way. Uh, they're also bowl hugging and building fo follicles and I have no doubt that if I had a male to put to them uh, they would breed immediately uh, so it's very easy to tell from the behaviours uh, which snakes are wanting to breed and which snakes not and we've contrasted that with the uh, uh, sub-adult females which are not building follicles and they behave in a very very different way. In some ways the uh, very simplistic setups that we employ here in the tropics simplifies the behaviour of the snakes and makes it a lot easier to, uh, to observe uh, differences in behaviour and spot which females are ready to breed and which are not. I do have an incubator outside of the snake room and this one does have a thermostat with heat cables in it uh, just to bump up the temperatures a little bit. Uh, it is currently switched off and empty uh, but you can see from the uh, temperature gauge in there that it's already sitting at 30 degrees centigrade and about 80% humidity uh, without it switched on so uh, I don't have to add much heat to my incubator you can see there's a heat gun and the uh, thermostat around the corner there. This is a converted drinks cabinet, there's room for about eight clutches in here and just a little uh, temperature buffer there with the water bottles at the bottom but you can see how little heat cable it actually takes to warm this drinks cabinet up sufficiently to incubate eggs at 89 Fahrenheit. So now we've seen my room upgrades and uh, we've had a look at my uh, setup. Uh, let's have a look at uh, uh, a pairing that I'm going to be doing next year that I'm very very excited about now that I've got my imports from Justin Kabelka. So guys this is my red stripe clown female from Justin Kabelka. This will be plugged into one of my spot nose combos. Uh, she is already quite large so hopefully she'll be up to size by next breeding season. It's great to uh, get a clown female and it's already sub-adult. She is already eating, which is fantastic. Doesn't want to stay still. But this is the key to my Pompeii project. I wanted a Pompeii since I first saw one and now I have the ingredients. So this is my red stripe clown female and this is the male that uh, I produced from a clutch uh, last season this is a pastel spot nose yellow belly het for clown male so right there uh, with the red stripe the spot nose and the yellow belly I have all but one of the essential ingredients for the Pompeii it leaves me just the black pastel short of the Pompeii but as Justin has already proved black pastel is replaceable with other genes such as uh, chocolate uh, he's done the chocolate Pompeii or choc pay and I'm sure other dark genes will also be uh, equally uh, beautiful in that Pompeii combination uh, cinnamon perhaps would work uh, just as well as black pastel so uh, this guy here will uh, leave me one gene short of the Pompeii uh, but not a total disaster because it gives me the flexibility then to plug in which of the dark genes that I want to try for in the Pompeii. So next season is looking fantastic. We'll uh, give that girl a year to grow up and hopefully she'll be ready to breed by next year and we'll plug this guy into it and see if we can't make some Pompeis. Awesome. So that's it guys, that's how I keep my snakes out here in the tropics. Um, probably uh, a little bit of a, a revelation for, uh, for many of you. One plug here uh, feeds the whole electrical power needs of my whole snake room and that's purely for fans. I don't, don't have any heat mats. Uh, temperature control is purely ambient. I've probably forgotten uh, many of the details uh, and the devil is in the details of keeping snakes out here in the tropics so um, don't hesitate to uh, jump in the comments and ask questions I love your feedback and it will remind me of little subtle differences that um, I've perhaps uh, forgotten uh, so please do ask away that's it guys thanks for watching 
Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.